Hey, 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 Myra Cassidy here, empowerment coach, religious trauma specialist, motivational speaker, author, just trying to bring a word of encouragement this Sunday. Hope everyone is well. Um, I definitely wanted to say, first and foremost, think about joining my group coaching platform that's going to kick off this December. It's for the purpose of building community for women who identify as Jehovah's Witnesses who are experiencing severe anxiety or basically religious trauma or who like me have religious trauma syndrome. It is definitely a terrible, terrible thing to deal with and to have and to experience and we need community to heal. And there are resources and definitely lots of different methods that can be applied as coping skills and techniques and I wanna share those. So definitely think about joining my community the thing about it is you probably don't know that you have it. So one thing I would say is it feels like just, I can't. When you think about going to the hall, you go, I can't. And this is something that people experience no matter, I mean, across a plethora of religions, right? You can never say every, but pretty much it's that's what this is. It's across the board. Certain people experience so much trauma within their faith-based communities that it causes uh, severe trauma, not just church hurt or hall hurt. This is severe trauma to the point where you may experience uh, panic attacks. For me, I can't even read my Bible. So thank goodness um, through my studies at Indiana Western University, learning about this and studying psychology, at least I can read you know, the English Standard Version to a certain extent before I feel overwhelming feelings of anxiety and so forth. And unfortunately, that's the look of this. It, it's bad. And when you're in it, you feel so alone. But a lot of what you're experiencing is normal you just don't know because you don't know where your resources are. You haven't met people who have similar experiences. And once you get connected and you understand that you're not alone, you'll do so much better. So think about joining that community. All right, December. It's December, okay? First Tuesday in December is when it kicks off and we'll meet uh, every Tuesday bi-weekly, okay? 7.30 to 8.30, more information to come. I wanna talk to you about Teresa Graves. What is my connection with Teresa Graves? Well, Teresa Graves was the first African-American woman to be featured on a crime drama series. Trying to get it right, so I got some notes. She played the character Get Christy Love. I used to have the movie. I let somebody borrow it. Never gave it back, but that's okay, because I do that kind of thing too. Get Christy Love. Oh my goodness, I love Get Christy Love. I love that movie. And just um, Teresa Graves, I mean, she's just this beautiful, gorgeous, talented black woman, actress, singer, and so forth. And my connection with her, um, I learned about her actually when I was this fellowship because she had died uh, that time. So back in those years when I was this fellowship from 17 to 21, she unfortunately died. And there was a uh, information in Jet Magazine that was published about her. Well, it meant a lot to me because around that time, I started feeling like I wanted to get into acting. And when I read her story, I felt like, you know what? I, I, I'm, a, I'm okay. I'm okay because, you know, Teresa Graves made decisions not to continue to pursue her acting career because she wanted to focus on her ministry. So what happened with Teresa Graves was she became one of Jehovah's Witnesses in 1974. And then in 1984, she retired from um, Hollywood because she felt like um, the thing she was being asked to do was a conflict with her religious beliefs, which was her personal decision, okay? She went on to advocate for the persecution of Jehovah's Witnesses in Africa and do different things like that to raise awareness to how they were being mistreated. So she, um, yeah, she got baptized in 1974 as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, retired in 1984, but she died at the age of 54, unfortunately, in a house fire. Like she had a space heater and it caught on fire and she died, which is 54 is still young. Oh my goodness. So why does this mean so much to me? Because like I said, when I was this fellowship and I learned about her life through her death, her unfortunate death, I felt like 
okay, Myra, don't go into acting. Because if you go into acting, you probably are never going to make it back to being one of Jehovah's Witnesses, right? That was my focus. I was in a period of time where I was being disciplined. I felt like if I tried to pursue those things, it could be a very, very slippery slope. I was a single mom. I had just one child at that point. And it's like, and who's gonna watch my kid? So you gotta think realistically. So I say that because I can see in my life where uh, the performing arts has always had a theme in my life even if it was after school the stress from school I would come home and just dance in front of my mirror just dance in front of my mirror I had a whole concert that's just something I would do to get all that stress off of me you know going to school and things like that so I always uh, was always drawn to like the camera right I mean people are, I'm known for just kind of doing things in the telecommunication world always having a camera as a little kid my dad's camera just always playing with it different things like that so telecommunications is definitely you know a thing for me but I never really thought about how much the performing arts was a thing for me too but with Teresa Graves um, she actually did an interview you know how um, like 1977 April 22 1977 she had an interview um, in the awake magazine which is you know the publication yep, for anyone who's listening who may not be one of Jehovah's Witnesses the watchtower and awake magazines uh, you know definitely are, were passed out regularly right um, and things have changed over time and the way it's done but long story short the awake magazine was always published like twice a month so her article you can still read this if you want you can go to JW library and pull this information off her interview is there it's the April 22nd 1972 edition and it's called uh, our 1977 awake magazine choosing between the two loves of my life so what I recall from reading this because I've read this before I mean was she just talked about just why she decided to leave Hollywood, how she became one of Jehovah's Witnesses, and then like this man who wanted to marry her and like was gonna buy her like a castle. Like it was just, I mean, hey, I'll give you the world. You know what I mean? And I and actually I do remember from that article she found out that he was into like spiritism. <laughs> it was like, uh uh, no. If I recall from that article, uh, you know, she found that out and was like, nah, castle my foot. You know, but um, I can't remember all, you know, about that article because unfortunately, my I would love to read it again, but um, unfortunately for me, my religious trauma is so bad that if I try to read it, I'll get triggered. So, you know, but that's normal. That's normal. But here's why I'm talking about Teresa Gray's because I've always loved her story and her journey. And it's ironic that for me, drama therapy is the cure like right like drama therapy is the cure which is why my one woman stage play is so powerful this work that i'm doing to share my journey as a documentary is so powerful because drama therapy is actually what's working for me and for so long i suppressed any desire to you know get into the performing arts and so forth of course that's like frowned upon right like you're not really considered to be a spiritual person if you want to be an actress, right? And let's just say it bluntly. That's what it is, right? Um, so for me, keep in mind that I had seen several therapists over the years. Um, definitely when I first started going to therapy, that therapist was amazing, but I couldn't afford the cost. Um, so I definitely had challenges. And for me, when it comes to mental health, like if something's wrong with me, you better be sure. So I'm willing to pay and do self-pay. So I've had just so many different experiences paying, you know, $70 an hour out of pocket and, you know, you know, doing different things, you know, being with one therapist and not going well, unfortunately not being able to find a good therapist for my children, which has been super frustrating. I mean, literally, literally so bad that like, just real bad look look real bad I know we had a I know the therapist didn't mean any harm and a lot of it had to do with the laws in Indiana but literally I got put in contempt of court 
you know, because of something that our family therapist was telling us. She was absolutely right with everything she said. Don't get me wrong, but the laws of Indiana don't protect children who are being emotionally abused, unfortunately. So I've had some pretty bad experiences, which thank goodness, you know, I went and did it myself. But for me personally, drama therapy works. Drama therapy works. I've studied it. Um, performing while my one woman stage play has been a blessing. Um, it hurts, but it feels good at the same time because with drama therapy, the way it goes is you have to feel it to heal it. So by me speaking my journey and my starting with my childhood trauma on through this hour, a uh, depiction of my life into where I ended up a divorced, powerful woman accepting what has happened. I mean, it's just so much healing through it. So the thing about drama therapy is that it's an underrepresented field. And it was, it's interesting to me. It's just so interesting to me because a big part of my journey in leaving domestic violence was I was getting ready to lose my mind. And instead of straight up losing my mind, I sat out and started to write. Okay. And it just so happens that the first couple of pages of my book sounds like a monologue. So I said, okay, I'm going to speak it. Not knowing why, I'm going to get on stage and I'm going to speak these first couple of pages from my book. And that was my very first YouTube post on my YouTube page with me speaking. You're ugly. You're stupid. You're fat. You're dumb. I'm reliving what happened to me when I was 18 years old. And that's what I was being abused by my brother. Calling me ugly, stupid, fat, and dumb. And that is the space that I was in. I mean, I've been through a lot. I've been through a lot. And it's so emotionally um, destructive. It's so much narcissistic abuse. It's so much spiritual abuse and narcissistic spiritual abuse. All of that destroys your nervous system. So the way I get my power back is by speaking that out and somatic processing, right? I'm learning how to speak it out and to go back to those places through emotional recall. And even the I'm working with an acting coach, an amazing acting coach, by the way, veteran actress, love her so much. She, she is amazing. But, you know, when we're working together, you know, she'll ask me, did you say that like you did it just then? Is that what happened when it happened? I'm like, no. And she's like, give it to me like it happened. And that just helps me so much. She's such an amazing acting coach. Um, and the reason why she is such a blessing for being in my life is because, you know, we've con we've been in each other's lives for a number of years. And I was just telling her one day in a conversation, you know, there's really no drama therapist here in Indianapolis, Indiana. So I'm going to look for an acting coach. For one thing, I think that it's going to help me heal. And also, you know, I want to do this this play. Um, and she started working with me. And now that I presented my play, we have literally gone on the back end and gone through line by line of my play. And I've got notes and things to work on before I come back for this Midwest tour that's gonna happen next summer. So there's gonna be more information that I share about that. But for me, drama therapy works. Um, in my group coaching, don't worry, right? I'm not gonna be doing, we're not gonna be doing all of that. But there is like a few activities that are used in a group setting that will be beneficial. So I'm going to pull in, you know, those activities too as well to help the women in this community. But for me, doing my play, it's been a blessing. Discovering drama therapy and speaking it out and speaking it out. And every time I speak it out, I'm able to catch other things that I didn't catch before and heal and process from that. It's actually called externalizing. That's what it's called externalizing. So definitely, um, I just find that it's interesting that drama therapy is the thing that's working to help me heal from trauma, right? And even religious trauma, the drama therapy, talking about it. Uh, my biggest challenge that I got to work on, my acting coach told me, you play everybody but yourself excellent. Well, you do a great job playing everybody else but yourself. You got work to do. So I've got some more healing to do. So when I speak 
and I'm being that narrator, I'm coming from this completely healed, powerful place, and I'm looking forward to doing the work. So I'll share more information on that. Have a good Sunday.